All right. So this question says, uh, some math child is coasting at some speed. Um, let me say, M not, V not, over flat ground in a four kilogram wagon. Oh, okay. I gotta uh, subscript this differently. Let me say this is M child. And I think this is going to be a common speed, so I can leave that alone. This is the mass of the wagon. The child drops a one kilogram ball. Oh, interesting. So mass of the ball out the back of the wagon. Oh, that's interesting. So that the ball is at rest on the ground. So I have a velocity of the ball um, final that's going to be zero with respect to ground. Okay, what is the final speed of the child and the wagon? Uh, all right, so let me um, <laughs> draw the picture to make sure I understood it correctly, and then we'll work through the question. Sorry, I thought this was gonna be a trivially easy question, but it's not going to be, which is fine, you know. I, I don't like trivially easy questions. So uh, I have to describe all the elements of the system that we have. We have the wagon. So let's call this mass of the wagon, uh, which is traveling at some speed V0. And inside that wagon, we have a child uh, with the mass of the child, and we have a ball. And um, so this is the kind of the picture that we are starting from. And at some later time, this is the situation we are going to end up with. Um, the cart and the child will be traveling together still at some speed V final that we are going to want to solve for. And the child has caused the ball to go out of the wagon. And this is the part that surprised me, that speed of this ball is zero. Um, oftentimes, sometimes the questions like this says uh, the child uh, uh, drops the kilogram ball out the back of the wagon and just stands it there or, you know, drops it. And usually uh, in a real physical situation when that happens, when you're in a cart and you just drop something to the side, then what that'll do is the thing you're dropping, it'll be moving together with you. And in that situation, you say, oh, this is V-final, it's V-initial. You didn't actually change anything by dropping stuff out of the car. Because, uh, yeah, so <laughs> but the, the question is written in a very strange way that actually makes it not trivial easy. So let's actually work it out. So, um, uh, so this, uh, will, let me just circle this as the second state of things that we'll consider. These are going to become my snapshots. Uh, my snapshots one and two. This, I don't know if I would describe this as a collision question. Um, let's just say we didn't somehow identify this as a collision question, uh, which if we did, it'll simplify some of the steps. So I'm just uh, considering this picture um, uh, de novo from the start. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, huh, what kind of problem solving strategy can I apply here? And my number one choice almost always from this point on throughout my entire <laughs> physics career will be, can I use conservation strategy? So I'm considering conservation law strategy as a possible way to uh, tackle this question. So the very first step in conservation law strategy is you need to identify conserved quantities. And it helps me to list all the quantities that we know can be conserved. There's conservation of energy, potential and uh, kinetic energy. And really, when we say energy, we mean mechanical energy, because uh, we are not dealing with other forms of energy in this class. And so far, we've covered the momentum. So those are the two quantities that could potentially be changed, uh, potentially, well, potentially be conserved. <laughs> so in this first step, we are uh, testing, can they be changed? If they can be changed, then uh, we would say, all right, that quantity is not conserved. So for conservation of energy, the condition that you are looking for is no net work 
by non-conservative forces. Um, and we have only two conservative forces in this class, gravity and spring force. So basically any force that's not a gravity or spring force better not be doing any work. If they do, then there's a chance your energy wasn't conserved, unless that work was done only to transfer energy from one object into the other, but that's a separate thing. Um, and um, momentum, the condition that you are looking for for momentum conservation is no net impulse uh, due to uh, external forces. And in lecture, I go into more detail of justifying these two expressions. I just want to highlight here that this is important. Every single word here is important. Every single word here is important. And really the thing that trips up a lot of people is what kind of forces to watch out for? When you are dealing with the energy, it's the non-conservative forces you worry about. When you're dealing with the momentum, it's external forces that you worry about. Don't swap them around or mix them up, please. So with the energy, uh, I want you to visualize this setup. So I um, guess gravity isn't actually doing any work here. So, all right, um, there's no, uh, and, and there's no spring, so no spring force. I don't think there's any normal force doing work here. So as you look at this picture, it might be relatively easy for you to, for people to think, oh, that means um, energy is conserved because it feels like there's no force that's doing work. That's where I want you to be careful and think through this picture carefully. Think about the moment when the child is pushing the ball out. And um, in order to achieve this final state, I believe the child has to really throw the ball. And as the child is throwing the ball, okay, now somebody's doing work on the ball. Where does that energy involved in the throwing comes from? And as you think through it, so the, the force that, you, that the child is applying on the ball, that's an applied force. It's one of the non-conservative forces. And really the energy that the child is throwing the ball with comes from the, the chemical energy, the food energy. It's not one of our mechanical energies. So when you think through this picture carefully, you should conclude that energy is not conserved in this setup because there's a person who's throwing stuff that's a, that additional energy has to come from that person. It can also go into that person. If I'm you know, catching a ball, as I catch the ball, I dissipate the mechanical energy into friction and whatever. So, so it's important. Um, this the first step is it's important like a free body diagram drawing step is important. If you do this step wrong, the rest of your strategy will be wrong. So, okay, uh, I've argued to myself that energy is not conserved, so I'm not going to be using conservation of energy. So the, the question is, is the momentum conserved? Well, this applied force, it's an internal force. If we include the ball as part of our system, then, um, then, then, it's, a, um, then it's internal. <laughs> it's a force between the two objects in the system. So there's uh, this uh, uh, impulse that the child is imparting to the ball, well, it's internal force, so it's all accounted for. Total momentum is still conserved. So I'm going to say, okay, my momentum is conserved, I'm going to write conservation of momentum energy, and let's hope we have enough equations to solve for our unknowns. So once you've identified your um, conservation, conserved quantity, then the next step is write conservation law equation. So I'm and uh, as you're doing that, you should identify useful snapshots if you haven't already. Here, I've done it already, snapshots one and two, initial and final, that's kind of common choice. So going with the choice, let me write down my conservation law equation. So I'm saying net uh, momentum, uh, the total momentum in snapshot one is equal to the total momentum in snapshot two. All right, and the next step, which I won't bother to <laughs> write out in detail, is I'm gonna identify, okay, um, what are the, uh, the constituents of that total momentum, and do I have enough equations, and go through that. So total momentum is natural one, so I'm going to use the common speed, but let me just split out each object separately, since they are listed separately. 
So I have momentum of the child plus I have the momentum of the wagon plus I have the momentum of the ball. They all have the same speed because they were traveling together. That's my snapshot one. And since total momentum is conserved, the uh, total momentum in snapshot two must be the momentum of the child in that snapshot plus the momentum of the wagon in that snapshot. We final same speed for child and the um, wagon plus momentum of the ball in the snapshot, which according to the information given is going to be zero, zero velocity at rest on the ground. It's a weird setup, but that's what the question is telling us. So we'll go with that. So all the masses I believe are given, uh, V1 was given. Ah, so the only quantity that wasn't given that we have to solve for is V final. And uh, I, we have one equation, one unknown, so it should be solvable. So the rest of the steps in the solution is really finishing the algebra. And as I did with the previous question, let me just use my computer algebra system. I'm uh, feeling lazy, <laughs> hungry, <laughs> tired. <laughs> so um, I have my equation. I did a part that computer algebra system can't do for me. Uh, I'll let the rest be done through the calculator. So mass of child, V1, uh, mass of the wagon, mass of the ball, uh, V final. I think those are all the symbols I need. I might have defined them already, but declaring it multiple times doesn't hurt anything. Uh, let me define my equations. Uh, that's going to be MC plus v, MC times V1 plus mass of the wagon times V1 plus mass of the ball times V1 is equal to mass of the child times V final plus mass of the wagon times V final plus, uh, let me just write zero because um, that's gonna, what the final term is gonna be. So that's my equation. Let's just make sure I typed it in correctly. Everything looks fine. I'm gonna use solve function, solve this equation for V final. And oh, there it is. That looks right, uh, it looks complete. <laughs> I don't know if it's right or not. It's probably right uh, because it looks complete. Let me put this a solution, last uh, output, of first element of the last output into its own variable so that I can do a substitution of the numbers that we've been given. So the numbers we've been given are um, the mass of the child, 23 kilogram, uh, initial, oh, I labeled this V0, but it's V1. Um, just if you somehow just uh, use the couple different letters, make sure you know what's what. <laughs> um, mass of the wagon is four kilogram, um, and mass of the ball is one kilogram, and V final we are solving for, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, let me see. Make sure it does the decimal approximation. All right, so V final is 3.42 meter per second. Hmm, that's higher than initial number. Uh, I, I think it's worthwhile just uh, pausing for a bit and making sure that that makes a sense. That, um, so when the child is doing work on the ball, the child is actually doing negative work. Oh, but there's a reaction force on the child. So that must be doing some positive work. And somehow that's, uh, I guess maybe not in terms of the doing work, but in the sense that, you know, if that child was hungry and uh, rest, not, uh, not restless, um, as hungry and tired as I was, he might not be able to throw the ball hard enough. So th this act of throwing the ball requires energy. So I think it makes sense to me that this final speed of this uh, child in the cart is higher. And somehow if we calculate the total energy of this thing, I think it's gonna come out to be higher. Um, so, okay, so let me put that in as the answer and see if it, the system says that's correct. 3.42. All right, it says it's correct. So I must be not right. <laughs> Okay, let me, oh, actually, so let, before moving on, uh, let's just try calculating the kinetic energy of the uh, thing for fun. Um, so, uh, so I'm just gonna use that number. So uh, kinet, initial kinetic energy would have been the total mass times uh, one half 
times uh, V initial squared. Uh, and then substitute in all these numbers that I've typed it in before. So this uh, was your uh, initial kinetic energy in units of joules. And let's see what this looks like um, in um, uh, after, uh, post collision or post throwing of the balls. So child and the wagon is traveling at the speed of a final. Let me put in that um, answer from before. And then, and I guess I can just leave it there. If I included a, a explicit term for ball, it would have been zero. So, so when I do that, yeah, I get 158.1 joule versus 152.5 joules. So energy has gone up. So it was good that we didn't use conservation of energy because that would have been wrong. Uh, let me just say I used the computer algebra system for the win. <laughs> All right. 